Hi, my name is Ellie and this is Countdown to Fit where I'm spilling all of the tea about going from that before body to that after physique. So on this channel, I'm completely transparent with you about the progress and the process of being a before self to becoming an after self. Um, so this is my one month update of being on the Mediterranean diet. And in this video, I really wanted to talk about my highs, about my lows, about my intentions for the next month, and of course, my measurements um, over this last month. I did measure them for you and for me because I was curious. So I'll just start off by um, talking about the high points of this last month. Um, each week I did kind of take notes in my journal of what I thought a high was, and this video is kind of a compilation of those bullets. So um, the first high is for the first two weeks or so, I would say I was very, very strict Mediterranean diet because it just felt good. It felt good. I mean, the food is so light. You just feel like you can wake up easily in the morning. You go to bed not being hungry or bloated or anything like that. It's amazing. Um, and so I guess my high it would be that um, in those first couple weeks, I was so disciplined that in the third week, when I started to have nibbles of things here and there um, that weren't Mediterranean, but I thought, well, I've been so good, you know, I'll just have a nibble. It's not like it's going to make a big deal. So, but what I noticed was even a nibble was enough for my body to bloat or to react. And it was awesome because now it was like, oh my gosh. I know exactly what did it. <laughs> I know exactly what did it because my diet was so consistent and even a nibble would cause some kind of a reaction. So I thought that was an incredible high. For me, that was um, wheat wasn't great. Um, like, like pasta from the store that is, uh, you know, refined white. I don't know, it's kind of yellowish, but we started buying um, pasta that was imported from Italy and it has much more of like a yellow deep color. That doesn't affect me. But the spaghetti and stuff in the boxes that we have in America, it wasn't good, not good. Um, yeah, so that was awesome. And then I had a nibble of a cookie. Um, it was a delicious cookie, but <laughs> immediately felt that. Um, another time my husband had, um, gone to Chick-fil-A and so I had got a small mac and cheese from them. Um, incredible mac and cheese. If you're sleeping on Chick-fil-A, don't, it's amazing. But unless you're following this with me, then don't even touch it. Don't even touch it. Um, yeah, had a nibble of that immediately. Not great. I'm kind of guessing it was because the macaroni in it was probably from, you know, just the same, kind of manufacturing processes that I just talked about. Um, because cheese hasn't bothered me on my spaghetti or anything. Um, cheese hasn't really bothered me. So I think it was probably just, again, the pasta. But I think it's way cool that you can immediately tell what's going on and what your body doesn't like. So um, I don't know if you were following me when I gave a one-week update, um, but I was excited that I could drink red wine all that I wanted. Um, and let me tell you, I've continued drinking red wine daily and it's one of my favorite parts of, um, this meal plan only because, um, I was so hard on myself for so long about not having wine. It shouldn't be allowed. Um, so I just have a little glass every day. I used to have like a big glass and now it's just kind of like a little glass cause it's not as special cause I do it every day, but um, if you're following me in that video, I had mentioned that I love dry wine. Dry reds are my thing. Always have, always has been. And, um, I started just feeling very dehydrated after a few days of that. And then my husband in his infinite wisdom, he suggested, well, if dry red is doing that to you, maybe try a red blend, um, which I usually don't love because I just don't really like sugary kind of red wines, even though red blend is not, I mean, it's not sugary. It's not like a dessert wine or anything, but to me, it's a little sugary. Um, but anyway, I started doing the red 
consistently and it's worked out great for me. I've had no issues with like feeling <laughs> like the Sahara is in my throat. Um, so yeah. So if you were wondering uh, how that went, that's how it's gone. Um, but another high is around week three, I started noticing that I could feel my collarbones better and my jawline, like I could feel my jaw um, better than I had in a long time. Um, also my waist was coming in, it was pinching in a little bit. And I was really excited to see that because my waist, um, anything from like chest to hips, so anything over there, my back, my hips, my waist, that's where I gain it first and the worst. So I was really positive to see that. It felt like all the exercise and all the workouts I have been doing were paying off. And I, for the record, a little asterisk here, I did not miss a workout. I did stick with it. Um, even though some days I did miss for whatever reason. And then the next day I would double up and I would do yesterday's workout with today's workout. And I really don't plan on doing that if I can help it. It's not fun, but I was committed. So I didn't miss a workout and I felt like my waist was pinching in and it was great. It was a total high, total reward. And um, I just felt stronger. I really noticed that by like week four, I felt stronger. I was able to hold the planks longer, the push-ups. I was able to get more reps in and they didn't I mean, it's not like they didn't hurt. I mean, there's still a push up and a plank, but they didn't hurt the same. And I wasn't as sore the next day. So I knew that was probably a cue that I needed to hold it longer or deeper or something like that just to get more um, effect. So that's what I'll be doing this next month is probably starting to gauge my, the weights and the pounds that I'm using and all of that so that I'm continuing to challenge myself. Um, if you watched my fitness journey video, I talked about how my goal for the last five years has been to um, kind of fix my digestion. Um, it's just not really been great. So I tried a bunch of diets to um, to fix that. Um, so I started with keto. I did Ayurveda. I did vegan, vegetarian, pescatarian, all of these things. I talk about it in more detail in that video, but... Um, Nothing really seemed to work too well, um, but I will say the Mediterranean diet, I do feel pretty good, pretty good um, with the olive oil, I think it is, because when I started this journey um, a month ago, um, I remember watching a video and they said that people in Greece literally have like six tablespoons of olive oil a day. And that blew my mind because in America, oil's the devil. I mean, you just don't even... You're not even in the same room as oil, right? Because it's just going to infect you. So I was kind of curious about that. And so I really jumped in and I was like, well, if these people are having six tablespoons a day, then I'm going to at least do four. I mean, I'm not really going to this go. And so I did. I, I dipped um, sourdough bread in olive oil well, almost every day. Um... So probably sometimes I was doing four to six tablespoons um, a day and my digestion loves that. It loves it. It's like more regular, more predictable. Um, and I mean, that also just makes you feel better during the day. You're just, you feel lighter and happier and brighter. So really excited about that. I'm really excited about the prospect of that. Um, I'm going to try and do better about actually adding olive oil to more things instead of having to consciously like dip bread in it um, because sometimes I forget to do that and then um, I suffer a little bit. So, But overall, olive oil is actually great. And like I said, I was having four to six tablespoons a day and you, as when we get to the measurements part of the video, you'll see that I actually made progress. So take that, America. Um, I mean, it's not like canola oil or something, but they, I don't know. I feel like I was told all oil is evil, um, but olive oil seems to be great. So as far as the lows, if you followed me in the last video, you would know that I really don't like grocery shopping. Um, it was my chore growing up and I've just kind of associated that with like a chore that I don't want to do. So that was, that was a low I think of this month because 
it's like if we did grocery shop, then I felt great. I was very consistent. I was cooking. I was making a good breakfast and things like that. But if we hadn't grocery shopped, I was all too keen to be like, well, let's order out. And then I'll just order out like on the healthier side, like get a salad or sushi or something like that. But it's not truly compliant and there's a lot of calories in dressing. So that was hard, I think. And my husband and I are... I'll talk about it later in the video, but we're strategizing like how to not have that be something we struggle with again this month. Um, so yeah, I gotta work on that. But you know what? I admit that I have a problem and I'm willing to work on it. So the other thing is I moved offices this uh, past month. So I've been in the same office building with my company for years and I was able to walk four miles a day pretty easily. There's a beautiful trail that walks around the business complex, but we moved offices last month. And so now instead of four miles, I'm only able to do three. So I've been trying to do those a couple times a day just as a break at work. Um, but I think that'll probably affect results a little just cause it's a mile less um, every day. Um, but you know, another low that I think doesn't get enough like light shed on it is sugar. Like I was having sugar in my coffee and I am like a real chocolate monster. I love chocolate. Um, so I would have a piece here and there. Um, and when I started the Mediterranean diet, I knew I needed to cut that out and I was fully prepared to do that. Um, and I cut it out cold turkey and I would say the first week was like kind of okay and the second week I really had cravings for sugar like to the point where I would just like drink water and be like okay we're not thinking about this we're not even hungry like we're doing fine <laughs> like just not good and um but I really held in there and I was like nope not doing it so by like week four I think it was like week four um I just decided I was going to have a cookie and it wasn't like, it wasn't like a, you know, huge cookie. It was just a cookie. It was a half a cookie people. Okay. I had half a cookie and, um, that was enough. The next day I was craving sugar. And then, you know, me who doesn't like to grocery shop, um, I ran out of honey because I've been putting honey in my coffee to cut the sugar out. And I ran out of honey and so then I put sugar in my coffee because I was like well I'm not drinking it without anything and then I craved sugar even worse and so now I'm kind of back on that like I gotta just cut it out cold turkey and if you have any tips leave them down below because it's not fun fighting the sugar monster but we do what we have to do around here um so what are my intentions for this next month? Um, grocery shopping strategy with my husband is numero uno. Uh, so what we agreed on is that I don't mind building the list. I don't mind planning the meals. It doesn't really bother me. I don't like going to the grocery store. So what my husband's going to do is if I have the grocery list to him by Wednesday night, then Thursday, he will go to the grocery store. And then all weekend, we have food in the house so we don't go out and uh, indulge in the local cuisines. So that's the plan. We're going to try it. We're going to see how it goes. I think it's going to go well because he's very reliable and I am too. Um, I have a lot of Capricorn in my chart <laughs> in case you do too. Um, and yeah, so we'll see how that goes. I really feel like if we can grocery shop pretty consistently, this is going to be much better this month. And I'm excited to tell you on the two month update how that actually goes. Um, my other intention is to commit more to the food um, this month. Like I was super, super like committed to the workouts last month because I've just, I've worked out, I mean, fairly regularly in large chunks of my life. So it's not hard for me to fall back into that routine, but food is like if it's in the fridge I will cook it I'm very good about that I can be very disciplined with my meal planning but if there's no food then I'm not going to do it so 
Uh, I'm going to have a higher commitment to food this month. So anyway, I bet you all are curious about the measurements. So here we go. Let's talk about it. So I essentially used the strategy, the methodology. I was going to use a measuring tape, like a seamstress measuring tape, and I was going to measure pretty much damn near everything. I measured my neck, my shoulders, my chest, my biceps, my forearms. I measured my waist, my hips, my thighs, my calves, my ankles. Yeah, I think that might have been it. I told you it was thorough because I can't, I'm not going back to, to that gal so that I know the progress I actually made. I'm just moving forward, people. So I had to be thorough. And I did. I lost something everywhere. Um, a little something everywhere. But I wanted to pick out the um, the few areas that I was kind of like the most happy to see some progress. And I'll tell you um, how much I lost. So my calves and my thighs, I lost half an inch from them, which I wasn't expecting. I really thought... Um, you know, if I was going to lose it somewhere, it wasn't going to be my, th my thighs and my calves, but I did, people. Um, <laughs> I lost almost an inch in my neck. Can you believe that? Like, I don't know if you can tell, but I did. I lost almost an inch in my neck, so, and then my forearms, I lost half an inch, and, um, in my waist, I actually lost an entire inch, which was really exciting because it was like I had mentioned earlier in the video. I could see that my waist was pinching in a little bit and um, I was really hopeful. And so when I measured myself, it was confirmation and I was very happy about that. Um, I think maybe the biggest surprise of it all was I actually gained um, a sixth of an inch in my shoulders. So here, I gained a sixth of an inch and I think that was the push-ups and the planks and um, I'm doing some shoulder exercises and things like that. So um, my whole goal was to kind of like build up this area and shrink the waist to just give that ver that visual effect of um, kind of the hourglass because I don't have that. I'm more of kind of a square in the middle. So yeah, really awesome. Um, I'll show some pictures because I always love seeing those, but I will disclaimer those pictures. The change doesn't look like a lot, but the reason is because I went a full month doing everything I'm talking about, and then on um, four weeks and one day into this, we went on vacation. It was a planned vacation we've had for a while. And while I did try and eat better, it's like I mentioned early in the video, it's like even a nibble of something and I was bloated or a nibble of this and I didn't feel good. So it was a week of trying to eat well. Um, but again, salad dressings, you know, have, I don't know, MSGs and stuff. I don't know. Um, so when I came home and took this photo, I was bloated and retaining a lot of water. Um, I, I still am. I mean, I don't think you can even really see all the benefits I've had. I'm still just trying to like sleep it off, if you know what I mean. Um, but I took the pictures anyway for you guys, because like I said, it's fully transparent. I'm not trying to hide anything. Um, my only regret is like, why the hell don't I take pictures the day that I measured myself? Um, didn't occur to me, I guess. So... Here we are, you get the bloated water retention videos or photos. Um, but anyways, that's my one month update. That's what I have to share. If you have any comments, comment below. If you have any questions, please send them my way. If you have any suggestions, I'd be particularly interested in those because um, I'm really committed to this next year and um, I don't wanna learn like a juicy saucy tip nine months from now that I could have used today, so you have anything please just comment below let me know and i'll see you again for the next video